Happy Monday. It is August 21st, and thanks for joining me. I'm Raven Dana, and this is Walking Between the Worlds. And um, we are having some classes coming in the fall. If you would like to go look at the two upcoming classes, you can check out my website. It's very easy, ravendana.com. Couldn't be easier to get there. And um, there's going to be one class coming in uh, October called Bee Magic, about bees, actual bees. And the class that's coming up in September um, is a deep dive, which is a set of practices for moving into the fall for autumn. So we'll cover things like uh, protection and warding and uh, visits with the dead and taking a deeper look at yourself and the layers of the world around you. So uh, both of the classes should be um, right up your alley, I would think. All right, today I want to talk a little bit about strangeness, high strangeness. Now we all typically have some things that happen that are unexplainable. And one of the things that we do with that information is we put it on a shelf somewhere. We think, well, I can't figure it out, so let me just shove it in a drawer. Now, one of the things that our mind does when we experience something that we can't categorize is that our mind will associate it with the closest thing it can come up with that has some kind of similarities. So that means, for example, sometimes people will think that they are seeing an owl or a deer, or a raccoon with big dark eyes, and yet it has a sense of strangeness, of mystery. It's speaking to them, it's speaking in their minds, and so they don't know what to do with that information. Maybe they have no reference for uh, what other people might actually see and recognize as a non-human being. And so their minds, for a variety of reasons, our minds do this, will pick something that, again, is familiar. Our brains are pattern recognition machines, basically. And, and it's a good thing, because it helps us get through our day without having to do a lot of overthinking. But the bad news is, when we're experiencing things that are far out of the ordinary, even though we might see things like that, on the news, I mean, not so much on the news, but on, uh, on TV shows or in special reports, often still in our own lives, we can't connect because we're afraid or because we simply don't have a reference point. So I'm, I'm bringing this information, I'm just talking about this today, so that you give yourself some permission to treat those experiences with kindness to be able to say to yourself, I may not be able to decode this or decipher this, but something happened here. And to sit with it, to just be with whatever happened and see if another layer or another layer or another layer makes itself known to you the way a dream might. You know, sometimes we have these dreams that in the context of the dream, everything makes perfect sense, but the instant we wake up, we think, what in the hell was that about? And we can't figure out why there was, you know, a flying kangaroo and a guy on a trapeze and, and God only knows what. The thing is, it doesn't matter because in the dreaming, in the between worlds, the level of communication is all about symbols. And it is not unusual to wake up unable to interpret, decode, uh, translate those symbols into something meaningful for the waking mind. Now, in a very similar way, when we have an out-of-the-box experience that's happening in our waking state, we often don't have what it takes to really recognize what's going on because we don't have a reference point for it. Now, you know, we're accustomed to deliberately thinking that we live in three dimensions. We live in more than three dimensions, but we typically don't have enough experience seeing into and experiencing and decoding some of the things that occur on the edges, on the fringes of our experience. So if we let ourselves be with those things, especially also when other people tell us stories, you might think to yourself, 
yeah, right, sure, that happened. And I'm going to caution you against making light of other people's experiences because even if the thing that they tell you makes no sense at all or you say, that couldn't possibly have happened, the thing that I want you to get is that something happened. They may not know what it was. Their mind may have turned it into something, again, other, something more uh, familiar, more easily understood, but that doesn't mean that something didn't happen. And also, sometimes we take experiences that occur and we don't play connect the dots. And what I mean by that is simply this. You might have a day where uh, the energy feels strange, things feel off. And then you might have an experience where in the same day, maybe, I just had this happen recently. The whole day felt a little odd. And then my television kept, I had it on, I never have it on in the afternoon, but I turned it on to look something up. And it's, it turned black, it went out. And I thought, well, that's odd. So I turned it off, I turned it back on. It came on and then it did it again. And I went, all right, it turns out, I don't understand it, but that's fine, I turned it off. And just then, a few minutes, not even two minutes later, one of my lights went out. Now it didn't like blow out, um, it just went out. And I thought, now that's, uh, okay, what's going on? And not even two minutes after that, my phone turned itself off and I thought, now this is really interesting. So all I did was wait, I waited, the light came back on all by itself. I turned my phone back on and it stayed on. And then uh, it was probably by then about an hour later, I turned the television on and it was fine. Now, clearly those events, whatever was going on, they were not related in the way that we would normally think that those things are related, right? I mean, it's not like the power went out and so it took out my TV and only one light, which then came back on and knocked my phone out. And yet those things were related. There was something energetically or electronically or magnetically moving through the area and I could feel it. I couldn't identify it, but the evidence was in those things that happened. That's, you know, a day of kind of high strangeness, right? Lord knows we've had higher, stranger things than that, but I'm just, I'm just using that as an example. That sometimes things like that will occur and we don't, we don't connect the dots. We don't say, look, there are these three or four things that occurred. Something's going on here. So we could sit with it. Again, it's not for the purpose of analyzing it per se or figuring it out, but just acknowledging it, being with it, allowing ourselves to explore that there is something right on the edge, right beyond the edge of our perception, that if we give it a little bit of our time and attention, may eventually clear up, may eventually give us a little more insight, may eventually give us the capacity to see something that we couldn't see before or know something that we didn't know before. So today, really, that's all I want to say. I want to encourage you to talk to other people with a new level of openness, to let them share or even invite people who maybe even randomly share strange tales and you think, oh, here that one comes again with another story. It, let that happen. See what's going on under there. Just let yourself know that very often what seems to be happening is something that our mind does to help us process what's really happening. And you know, that doesn't just happen in areas of high strangeness. It actually happens seamlessly in the course of our everyday lives, but we don't notice it there. We just assume that what our mind has turned something into is the truth, but it's, but it's often not. I mean, for example, this is something that uh, when there are witnesses, for example, to a crime, police cringe when there are several witnesses. I have a, a number of police as friends, and I've heard stories about how three people see the same guy run down the street, they're eyewitnesses, and each of them describes almost an entirely different person. And it's strange how that happens. We wonder how it can happen. And the answer is 
then our mind, which is a pattern recognition machine, will take that fleeting glance of a person and, t and turn it into whatever makes sense to us. In other words, if that person had once had an experience of being robbed, uh, they might substitute the person that robbed them uh, in place of the person they saw run down the street. Or if there's somebody that they really don't like, they might extract the person they saw run down the street and put in that place the person that they strongly don't like or mistrust. And this happens all the time. And so again, even our, what we'll call our ordinary memories are not particularly reliable. And trust me when I tell you, I talk to people a lot. I've been coaching people for 40 years and I will often hear stories about this something that happened in the family, for example. And different people will tell me entirely, entirely different stories. And so my job is to, uh, you know, I always say a story has three sides this person's side, that person's side, and somewhere in the middle, there's some truth, and that's my job, to sort out the story from the truth. And that's what I'm saying to you, is when we have high strangeness, that we don't need to get wrapped up in what we think happened. If we can just sit with it, that maybe the truth will show up, and it might not be in the package that we imagined it would be in, but that there, there is something happening there, that we're interacting with something, and uh, it might be impactful and useful for us to just open ourselves up to the possibility that if we pay attention, we can walk between the worlds with more efficiency. Okay. Um, I'm, I would welcome any stories that you have, by the way. You know how to find me. And I'm mentioning again that there are two autumn classes coming up. Um, you can find them uh, on my website in detail. It's ravendana.com. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I hope you have a lovely evening. And I am going to post a meditation in a little while, so you'll get a backup to this short memo today in the form of a journey. Have a nice night, and happy Monday to you. Bye-bye now.